so. Chapter 4, Power of the Subconscious Bringing out the magic in your mind works on the same principle as stage magic. It is that which is underneath that makes it work. Suppose I take a silk top hat. I hold the brim in my hands and the silk top below hides something. I pass my hand over the upturned brim, smile and say Abra Kadabra. The next moment I draw out a white rabbit, coloured silk handkerchief or perhaps a dove. The magic comes from underneath. It is very important to remember this. It is the same with your subconscious mind that is underneath your conscious mind and it knows the past, present and future. The subconscious mind is that wonderful part of your mind which regulates the beating of your heart, the breathing of your lungs and all the processes of digestion and assimilation. The conscious mind is that mind you use every day and with which you think and speak. It is non-creative and takes this life from the subconscious. It is but a mimic. It is the underneath mind, your subconscious mind, that brings out the magic. And you must have a constant awareness of this. You must never forget it. The best way to bring this awareness up to scratch is to cultivate the habit of dictating to it. Tell it things. The subconscious acts on your commands. It keeps a faithful record of all you have said, felt and done in your life. The limits of its powers are unknown. It never sleeps and it comes to your support in times of great trouble and aids you to do that which seems impossible. When properly employed, it can work. Fakirs and yogi make use of the subconscious to gain their extraordinary control over bodily functions. They can sit naked in deep snow and keep warm. They do astounding things and have complete mastery over physical resources. What is the power? It is the subconscious. Yogi can lash their bodies with a strong whip, but no blood comes. Such is the power of their underneath mind. Their aboriginal sleeps with his death bone under his head to impress his subconscious. Like that he can do black magic. The westerner writes his wish on a piece of paper and slips it under his pillow that he may sleep on it and that impresses his subconscious who acts upon his wish. Firewalkers take hundreds of pieces of paper on which their wishes are written and put them into the fire before walking upon it. A famous Swedish actress of film and television admits that when she has difficulty in learning a script she puts the script under her pillow at night and knows the lines perfectly next morning. Give commands to your subconscious. The subconscious never fails to obey any order commanded if the order is clear and emphatic and given with feeling. The stronger you feel about something, the quicker it is going to happen. A terrible snowdrift in Britain reveals the truth of this. A man, stranded in his car, waiting to be rescued, was cold and dying. A young woman came along and talked to the man's subconscious mind for hour after hour, while her husband flashed SOS signals on the headlamps of his Rolls Royce in the Woodland Pass in Yorkshire. They had seen the man get out of his car, try to walk along the road, and collapse in the snow from a heart attack. They brought him to their car, put coats over him, and made their dog lie on him to keep him warm. At 3 a.m. he said quietly, I'm going to die, and he collapsed again. Then the woman began to talk to his subconscious constantly. She kept whispering close to him, You must stay alive, you must stay alive. At noon they hauled the sick man to an inn, and still the young wife kept repeating softly the same words. This is how Rodney Prickett of Timperley, Cheshire, was saved by the magic of his subconscious. Some little while ago the newspapers carried a story of Miss Glover of Clapham. She had been talking to the subconscious mind of her seven-year-old son Paul for eight months. She completely cured his asthma. The Lancet recently told of a similar story. Repetition to the subconscious is like the chuff-chuff of the locomotive that takes a train across the country. If it is a love of poetry the mother wants for her baby, repetition of poetry said softly, slowly, 
acts upon the sleeping child's mind and what goes in comes out sooner or later. A mother can give her child the love of good music by playing a record player softly beside a cheap sleeping child. She would play the sort of music she wanted the child to grow up to be fond of. I used health repetitions on myself when I was in hospital. The conscious part of the mind is said to constitute less than a tenth of the whole of it. It is the subconscious that works while we sleep and during our waking hours. In the case of a baby who is far too young to understand that he or she has a mind at all, the mother or father can do a lot. And the action of one mind upon another at a distance is no more extraordinary than the action of a magnet on iron or the influence of the moon on the sea. A festival the Indians staged in South Africa. One Indian, the principal figure at the festival, was jabbed with skewers. Large needles and pins through the cheeks. Large things like fish hooks were jabbed into his back. He was given a pair of nail clogs to walk on. Many others had skewers jabbed into their flesh, but none showed signs of pain or blood. It is well known that bleeding can be controlled by the subconscious mind. Sometimes hypnotists demonstrate this fact by piercing through their hand with a hatpin, without any trace of bleeding whatever. Rasputin controlled the bleeding of a sick boy by giving commands to his subconscious. The boy was the son of Tsarina of Russia. Doctors had failed to control the bleeding, but the subconscious worked the magic at once. Ask your subconscious to awaken you at 5 a.m. and you will awaken on the stroke. I have done this many times when I have had to make an early journey somewhere. When Leonardo da Vinci, who was not only one of the great artists but a great engineer and scientist, found himself at a standstill from lack of sufficient serviceable ideas, he would stare at a heap of ashes. Like this he would pass into a profound state of self-hypnosis and in this condition there would arise in his mind just the ideas he wanted. These ideas would be uprushes from his subconscious. In effect, until da Vinci enlisted the aid of his subconscious mind, he remained a man of talent. That was all. It is possible to give yourself valuable suggestions and through the power of the subconscious alter, perhaps your whole attitude to life, turn sadness into joy, and melancholy into joy de vieux. It is possible to put yourself into the somnambulistic state discovered by Marquis Armand de, who was a pupil of Anton Mesmer, and tell yourself that you will perform a certain action at a certain time, and you will do so faithfully. The subconscious mind can acquire knowledge of conditions relating to anything. Have you a problem? Put it to your subconscious and wait patiently while it assimilates your worries and then it goes about its own way to work it out for you. In due course, with the flowing of ideas and plans, a solution to your problem will be revealed to you, and the correct course of action. You must follow this course immediately, up to the last detail. Look at the people who tell your fortune in cups, with cards or crystal balls, and the people who read your hands. They will say it brightly. I see a dark woman coming to your home with a large package. Oh, such a large package it is. She is coming to your home in two or three days. And I see a letter for you, with money in it. Oh, is that so, you say, and you begin to prick up your ears. A letter? One that is going to contain money? You are not expecting it, but anyway, it is coming. And you think, why, who's sending it? Who can it be coming from? You do not know. Why? Because you are asleep at the switch. Your trolley is off the wire. You are not alive to the magic that can be brought out of your mind. Of course there is a letter on the way with money in it, if you believe, and not let the thought. Maybe a horoscope says that you will have immense changes this year, exciting good news, sudden and dramatic money and travel are indicated. Believe it. Never mind whether you can see any exciting, any exciting changes or not. Believe and it will come to pass. You can make these predictions come true. Your subconscious which knows your past, present and future. I have said this before, can warn you of danger. I had a premonition. I remarked to my manager one evening that I had a feeling that this was my unlucky night. We were making a journey in my car for the north of England, and because I had this feeling, my subconscious was warning me, I had an awareness and drove my car at very slow speeds that saved us both from certain death. My car was smashed, but the warning made me drive slowly which consequently saved our lives. Some people attribute a thing like this to mere chance, I was just lucky to say, refusing to acknowledge that I had been warned and acted accordingly by driving slow. These are the people who never believe in anything, and the world is full of them. 
My hobby is driving a fast sports car at night, and I have a positive premonition that I will not be involved in an accident. I take no risks that would involve others, although I am convinced of this in my own mind. It is a hunch I have got, and where do these hunches come from? It is the subconscious that impresses you. I never make any mistake when something inside of me tells me what to do. You can always distinguish a hunch or the voice within from wishful. When you practice meditation daily, you soon begin to recognize a hunch. This difference in feeling cannot possibly be put into words, but you will recognize it at once. You will not be carried away with the wrong ideas. When something impresses you, you know. It is something you cannot explain. People often say, something told me to do, or something told me not to do. You do not actually hear a voice, but you are conscious that something has been said to you, and that you must follow it. Perhaps like many other people, you do not think that you are responsible for what happens in your life. Had you listened to your subconscious every day in the quiet of meditation, you would have been warned about so much and helped a great deal. You have had no direction, no guidance. But the past is gone. Forget it for the moment. When you have become well acquainted with all this that I am telling you, you can use your past profitably. Let me tell you what the Sunday graphic had to say about me in the issue, May 2nd, 1954. Ten million people in Britain who saw the mystery of the bottle on television last week are still asking themselves, was this the biggest stunt or the most successful hunch in history? And 36-year-old Al Coran... The man who forecast the result of the 2,000 guineas on TV last Sunday, four days before the race, was the first to admit, when I met him last week, that this is a fair question. As long as you're baffled, and who wasn't, Coran is happy. And this small, highly strung, prematurely grey man swears it was a hunch. Note that, a hunch. And they go on to say, Then why did he not collect the packet of all time by backing his fancy with a bookmaker? He has an answer to that one too. You see, he had another hunch that if he did, the forecast would not come off. Now, Mr. Coran, please come off it. One hunch I can take, but a second hunch about the first hunch. You see the sort of thing you are up against when you start to talk about hunches to people? How could I explain all that I have said so far in this book in a nutshell? All I know is that I must act on my hunches. You must act on a hunch that your subconscious gives you, because the subconscious is always right. The second hunch was like a reminder that if you back a horse you know is going to be a winner, you are not being fair to the other fellow who has not this knowledge. In other words, you are cheating. I have a great respect for my power. I do not stoop to cheating. And I know if I did, it would simply boomerang on me and cut off my power to work magic anymore. But you can't explain all this to a press group eager to trap you if they can. Where does the purity come in if I start cheating? Only a fool would want to lose the tremendous power that I am blessed with and that you will be blessed with if you don't cheat but play the game. So I act on my hunches. As I have said before, you must not question your subconscious mind about the whys and wherefores as to how it gets you this or that. You must believe unquestionably and act on it. Another paper said of me, Remember Al Koran, the magician who produced the certified £5 note with a forecast of the guineas on it a few weeks back? Believe it or not, before his appearance in What's My Line and Quite Country, he was calling on theatrical agents and having doors slammed in his face. But afterwards, the same agents were ringing him up and asking him to accept fabulously high rates to do the same act they had refused on cheaper terms a few days previously. Truth is, it was a hunch. I just backed everything on my hunch. And the paper goes on to say I was once a hairdresser. My physiological our psychological powers have brought me fame and fortune and I have no wish to turn back the clock. If you act on your hunches there is no limit to where you will get. Success will come in leaps and bounds if you do not use your power to outdo the other fella. But however successful you become don't expect people to praise you or believe you. Some will of course but there are always people who are envious, jealous and critical. Never mind go on loving them. You may remember the famous picture this picture, love was depicted as a woman sitting on top of the world with a bandage across her eyes. Love has to be blind. When you are on top of the world, remember that picture and turn the blind eye to those who envy and are jealous of you. The Sunday pictorial on May 2nd, 1954 had the headlines Al Koran was tricking you. If any of you still believe that Al Koran has psychic powers because he appeared to bring off a big racing forecast, you have been taken for a ride. Makes you laugh, doesn't it? There are people who can't be bothered to study psychology themselves, to give years and years to study of it, as I have done. 
All the way along the line you will find people having a dig at you the moment magic appears on your horizon. Even a master magician who turned water into wine suffered this. His own people turned against him. As soon as you begin to get criticism and people turn green with envy over your new car, your diamonds and all that, you will know what to expect. It's a sign that you're doing fine. So like the lady sitting on top of the world, shut your eyes to all this nonsense and carry on. Victory after victory to the top. Perhaps in your young days you read Hans Andersen's story. What the old man says is always right. I want to remind you that what the subconscious mind says is always right. The mind is very wonderful and the study of it is more wonderfully still because you come to realise step by step as you begin to piece everything together that magic is the outcome if you play your cards right. Every day of your life you can be working some magic for yourself and for others around you. Your castles won't tumble if you bank, bank on your subconscious mind. From the Daily Express, August 25th, 1951. It was certainly mystifying. This business of the Daily Express headline that Al Koran, the 34-year-old mind reader, said he would predict four days before the news. It started last Monday when Koran said he would write down Sunday's main headline. The news editor gave him a piece of office notepaper signed by several members of the staff. Koran wrote on it, folded it, had the outside countersigned and put it in a small tin. The tin was sealed, wrapped in ribbon and put in a jar. The jar went into a sealed cardboard container and the whole thing was locked up in the Daily Express office. On Saturday night, I took it to the London Society of Magicians annual show. I opened the container and jar, took out the tin. Koran whipped it from my hand to hold it up to the audience for a few seconds, then handed it back to me to open. Inside the tin, I found this headline prediction. Oil, troops receive orders. Remember the main headline in Saturday's Daily Express? It was, Oil, get orders. The countersigned no paper was the same. The container had not been tampered with. Says Koran, I simply followed a hunch. And me, ladies and gentlemen, I simply give up. Follow your hunches and you will never go wrong.